Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Caroline Bowman. Hello again. What an amazing night we have lined up for you. To select these designers who've joined our National Design Awards family, we assembled a diverse and talented panel of jurors. They had the difficult but important task of selecting this year's winners, and it was not an easy process, I can assure you. Over these past 15 years, we've awarded a grand total of 153 National Design Awards. Would all honorees and jurors, past and present, please stand so that we may recognize you. And now, on with the show. Presenting the Design Mind Award, please welcome best-selling author, host of Studio 360, and Cooper Hewitt board member, Kurt Anderson. Thank you very much. Thirty years ago, after I had somehow tricked Time Magazine into making me their design and architecture critic, I had to educate myself very quickly, meaning that I had to find a design and architecture writer who actually knew what he was doing, who could be my inspiration and my model, who wrote lucidly and smartly about big ideas and intimate details about visionary master builders and ordinary life. I did find him, and I'm happy tonight to acknowledge my huge admiration and huge debt to Vitol Rybczynski. My invitation, like yours, said festive dress, and I wasn't sure what that meant. <laughs> so I fell back on my architectural training and wore black. Uh, Milan Kundera once said that the, to be a writer does not mean to preach a truth, it means to discover a truth. And I've been lucky enough to, give, to, be, to have plenty of writerly opportunities to do that and to satisfy my curiosity about things. On the way, I hope that I've cast some light on the process we call design, which is a complicated process and it deals with cities, landscapes, buildings, and also everyday things. My sincere thanks to Cooper Hewitt, to the Smithsonian, and also to the National Design Awards for this recognition. It's very much appreciated. Thank you.
Joining us to present the Corporate and Institutional Achievement Award is graphic designer and winner of the 2008 Communication Design Award, Scott Stoll. Hi. Design is something we do for other people. Sometimes what we do is create a culture or a point of view or a situation that empowers those other people to do what they do. Etsy does just that for many, many people around the world. Etsy has lots of good designers making lots of nice stuff, but they also have a culture and a point of view and a situation that helps those designers do what they do. And for that, let's thank the person accepting this award, Randy J. Hunt. Hello. Thank you, Scott. Um, this is very exciting. Uh, wow. So, first I'll say very uh, thank you to the Cooper Hewitt uh, for honoring Etsy uh, under these sort of circumstances. It's kind of a remarkable thing. Uh, I don't know if you know, but Etsy is only, well, nine and a half years old. We're excited to celebrate our 10th birthday very soon. Uh, so in some sense, a very small, fledgling, precious, special thing. Um, but in another, hint, uh, another sense, a very kind of mighty, powerful thing and something we're really, um, really very proud of. Um, I'd also like to thank the jury. Uh, I'm not entirely clear about the process, even though it's been explained to me several times, that would allow this small, tiny, precious, fledgling thing to uh, be awarded here today, but thank you to them as well. Uh, and of course, our design team that Scott mentioned, about half of whom are here, uh, and the other half just as valuable and important. Um, they do the work that you saw here in just a brief glimpse, and that our community sees all the time. So thank you to them. This award is really for them. Um, maybe take a moment, applaud them. It would be good. Thank you. And then, um, as, as uh, Scott mentioned, I just want to thank the leadership and collaborators at Etsy that allow us to do what we do. Um, they create a context in which we're allowed to, uh, or able to do, the kind of design that we believe is important, um, that adds value not only to the business but to our community. And they do that more than anything else by trusting us. It's, it's that simple. We have meaningful, deep relationships and we trust each other and it allows us to do wonderful things. Uh, and then finally, uh, and most importantly, uh, our community around the world. Uh, I can proudly say that it's now 40 million members, and not the 30 million that's in your book. Uh, a community of 40 million people around the world, over a million creative entrepreneurs, uh, and that's really who we do this work for and who enable us to do this work. Uh, without them, Etsy nor our work would, uh, would not mean much, um, but with them it means a whole hell of a lot. So thank you so much. Here to present the Architecture Design Award is the 2008 winner in this category, architect Tom Kundig. Well, thank you. I've been watching this terrific team for years. They've always inspired, inspired me because they actively explore the possibilities of architecture. Beautifully shaped and crafted buildings 
thoughtfully sustainable, socially responsible. Architecture doesn't get better than that. Join me in congratulating Angela Brooks and Larry Scarpa. Thank you. Man, it's a great crowd out there. It kind of reminds me, I remember when we had our first lecture and people were getting interested in our work and uh, we were very nervous and the room was full like this. There were people sitting in the aisle and um, we started to think, wow, maybe people like what we do. And afterwards, when we were at dinner, I was talking to one of the professors there, and he, you know, I said, wow, it was great, it was a full house. And he said, well, it's a required, we pass around a sign-up sheet, you know. <laughs> so I've learned, and we've learned to be very humble, and we're certainly humbled by this award. And uh, we'd like to thank the Cooper Hewitt, the Smithsonian, and the national design awards for recognizing with this us with this such prestigious award so i'm going to let angie get us back on track here <laughs> we try to make lasting spaces that people love which to us are the building blocks of strong communities and we're lucky to have one foot in practice and one in education and we try to be not just the teacher, but the student as well. We realize the importance of teaching our younger generation of designers, and we realize that taking risks and having a little bit of a fear of the unknown is actually a good thing. So we want to thank you again to the amazing jury and the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum. We share this award with everyone who believes in the importance of design in improving the lives of everyone in society. Thank you. Joining us to present the Communication Design Award is Robert Wong from Google Creative Lab. Hi, um, I've been lucky to know Jason Schulte for uh, a lot of years. Um, we worked with him on the redesign of the Chrome logo. Uh, and I remember the first time he came to our office to show me his work, and I was blown away. Oh, we have to work with these people. A couple of things you need to know about uh, office. First thing, they'll argue with you. Not because they like to argue, but because you just believe what they're doing. Uh, second thing, talking about LEAF, they do a lot of stuff for good. Uh, they do tons of pro bono work, um, you know, 826 Valencia every year. Um, and lastly, um, if you're lucky enough to be their client, every holiday they send you a beautiful poster that they do. <laughs> so you know what to do if you want to get a beautiful poster. Without further ado, I'm pleased to announce um, the Cooper Hewitt National Design Award in communication design to office, led by Jill Robertson and Jason Schulte. Thank you, Robert. So we are humbled to be recognized alongside designers we hugely respect. And we're honored to help Cooper Hewitt demonstrate the power of design. So Jason and I met when we were students at Iowa State University. He actually walked into an office where I was trying to design a brochure. He completely redid it. 
20 years later, we're essentially doing the same thing. <laughs> design is what brought us together, and our life's work is using design to make things better, more useful, more sustainable, more beautiful, and more fun. I'd like to thank everyone um, from the Smithsonian, the, uh, the Cooper Hewitt, um, and of course to the jury. Um, I'd also like to thank my um, design mentors, Charles S. Anderson and Todd Piper Houseworth, who took the time to take a clueless young designer and kind of teach him what he should know. I'd like to thank my mentor, Paul Pressler. And I would like to thank all of our clients, both past and present, um, and especially the, the tough ones. And a huge congratulations to our team at Office, which is somewhere over there. They're like the most crazy talented, hardworking, good-looking people that we know. Um, and they, like us, believe that design should make you feel something. And um, design right now feels pretty darn good. Thank, Thank you. you. Here to present the award for Interaction Design is Brain Pickings founder and writer Maria Popova. He has expanded our understanding of the world and our enjoyment of it with his remarkable work in interaction storytelling. Um, and he has done it with the uncommon combination of genius and humility. It is my great joy to present the 2014 Cooper Hewitt National Design Award for Interaction Design to the immeasurably brilliant, devastatingly humble Aaron Koblen. I just, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the jury and uh, Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum for this wonderful honor. Uh, and I'd like to dedicate it to everybody who's ever contributed to an open source project. I wouldn't be standing up here today if it wasn't for hundreds of artists, designers, and educators who've contributed to open source projects. Libraries like Processing, Open Frameworks, Cinder, and 3JS. Uh, one of the most rewarding aspects of what I get to do is work with truly amazing people. And I'd like to thank all of my collaborators especially my good friend Chris Milk, who's here tonight. Uh, I'd also like to thank Robert Wong, Andy Burnt, and everyone at Google Creative Lab for their continued inspiration, support, and healthy disregard for the impossible. And finally, I'd like to thank my partner in crime, Lindsay, and my wonderful parents who haven't always understood exactly what it is that I do, but have been unconditionally supportive since the day I was born. Thank you very much. Presenting the Interior Design Award via video is actor and director Ben Stiller. Hi. My friends Robin Sandifer and Stephen Alesh are two of the most talented people I know, and I do know them well. After working with them on Zoolander, 
over 40 years ago. Robin and Steve then redesigned my home in LA. Let me be the first to say that money is no object to them when it comes to creating the perfect environment. Trust me. They care deeply about the aesthetic of design and have a unique vision that comes from their heart and also happens to be brilliant. Their firm, Roman and Williams, was named after their grandparents who were pioneers in the field of pretending not to be Jewish. I'm kidding. Guys, I don't even know if you are Jewish. That's how good you play this game. I understand that after meeting with Michelle Obama last week, they landed the job of redecorating the White House, which is great. The uh, Obamas are going to be staying in the local embassy suites until the improvements are completed. Might take a little longer than expected because Robin talked the president into using a rare form of imported teak from Sri Lanka for the Oval Office desk, but it's on a 12-week back order. My guess is the project is not going to help with the national debt, but it's going to look incredible. Seriously, I consider these two people one genius creative entity that makes the world a much better place to look at and exist in. And now, I'm proud and honored to virtually present Robin and Steven with this year's Interior Design Award. Congratulations. I love you guys. Oh boy. Totally disarmed. <laughs> and not going to try to be funny. Okay. We didn't see that before. <laughs> So that was the first we've heard of that. So um, this is a remarkable honor, and um, we are so thrilled and grateful to be part of such an incredible group of winners, and we want to thank the Smithsonian and the jurors and the Cooper Hewitt for honoring us and for recognizing us. And, you know, it's, it's so meaningful to us to be honored for making things, because in its essence, it's really what all of us here do, and to know that people appreciate it means the world to us, because it's those people um, that are why we do it. Um, I also want to express our incredible gratitude and appreciation for our staff. They are amazing and stick by us and believe in making beautiful things, which is uh, an important thing that we care about. And I also want to thank my excellent partner and husband, who's standing right here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for loving what we do. That, that means everything to us. Thanks. <laughs> Joining us to present the Landscape Architecture Award is the 2009 winner in this category, landscape architect, artist, professor, and author, Walter Hood. Wow, Andy, we get to follow Ben Stiller. I'm not going to be that funny, though, okay? Um, this is my pleasure uh, to present this award to a great friend and colleague. But one thing I want you to know is when I was uh, studying... I followed your career very early, and you were a great inspiration to my work, and I think a generation of people as well. And your work is stunning, it's beautiful, it's evocative, and if you've ever been in one of her landscapes, it makes you feel everything and you tingle all over. Congratulations, well done, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Wow. I'm so honored to be here tonight, to be recognized in the company of such extraordinary talent. It's just amazing and humbling. 
Thank you to the Smithsonian and the Cooper Hewitt for sponsoring the National Design Awards. By publicly recognizing the, design, the, the power of the design experience, you have brought the work of many others to the attention of a broader audience, and my, my work as well. Design is made, good design is made possible by great clients who trust and challenge us. When, we moved in, when I moved to Northern California 30 years ago, I found a community that understood the role of landscape architecture, architecture in shaping the physical environment. The Bay Area's culture of innovation, which fueled the free speech movement of the 1960s, as well as the recent digital revolution, has also shaped my own work. I am extremely grateful for being nurtured by this forgiving climate and thankful I've had the opportunity to work with so many visionary people over the years. On that note, I want to thank the very talented team of designers who are here with me tonight from my studio to share this award with me. You all are the best. Thank you very much. And here to present the award for product design is the 2013 winner of this category, President and Principal Designer of New Deal Design, Gadi Amit. Hi there. Uh, for 30 years, Lunar has been a beacon of progress in design. Um, they've carved um, a niche that wasn't there um, design that is distinctly American, Californian, that is uh, approaching technology objects in a completely new way, and in doing so, not only enriched um, everybody's world, but uh, basically led uh, a movement in um, design that um, grew the whole design community in the Bay Area. And through this process, they uh, nurtured and groomed the whole um, generation of designers, which I think is an achievement in itself. Uh, give a, please give a big hand for uh, Jeff Smith and um, Gerard Ferbershaw for winning this year Product Design <laughs> National Design Award. It looks like I lucked out and wore a pink tie tonight. 1984, the Apple Mac was released, HP debuted its first laptop, and Lunar was launched. Instead of starting up in the mythical Silicon Valley garage, we began in a cavernous abandoned helicopter factory next to where Facebook stands today. We've been fortunate to have evolved in the San Francisco Bay Area. Being honored with the National Design Award makes our 30th year anniversary even more special. We thank the Cooper Hewitt and jury for recognizing Lunar's work. And my special thanks go to my wife, Michelle, and daughter, Josie, for their unrelenting support. We'd also like to thank Lunar's leaders, some of which are standing behind us here today. John Edson, Jeff Salazar, Ken Wood, Art Sandoval, Matt Peterson, Richard Yaus, Andrew Z, Mark Dursk, Roman Gephardt, and Mattis Hammond. And also all of the past and our present employees and our clients who made Lunar successful for 30 years. We feel this award is for all of you, all of them. 
Thanks also to my son Spencer, a, a new Manhattan resident. Uh, he's always been an inspiration to me, and also thank you to my life partner and sweetheart, Mary Self, for all your love and support. Design is dreaming like children, and it's also working like mad to make the future better. And we know this because we get to work with amazing people, amazing people who behave this way, and we've seen how they create the excellence, we've seen how they create the innovation, and we've seen how they create the enhancement of the quality of life that these awards honor. So thank you very much for this honor. We're really happy to be here. Joining us to present the Fashion Design Award, please welcome artists Cindy Sherman and Robert Longo. We're kind of disappointed we don't get to use the teleprompters. <laughs> anyway, Narcissio is an artist and his art does not hang on the walls of art galleries or museums, but lives in the real world and it moves in the real world and is worn by real women. From the First Lady on that historic moment in 2008 on election night to my next door neighbor, kind of hip 17-year-old college daughter, I think a lot of people have convictions, but I think Narcissio really has convictions. And um, he refuses compromise. I think he, his integrity is absolutely inspirational. He's loved by so many people, and he's inspired so many young designers, which I think says a lot. I think he's definitely one of the good guys. Narciso uh, is a firm believer that a woman should wear the dress, not the other way around. But it is, it is his astute understanding of what flatters a woman's body that lends confidence to the woman smart enough to wear one of his designs. So we all agree he's pretty good at this fashion stuff, huh? <laughs> we are so proud to, uh, so proud of Narcissa for receiving this much deserved award and please welcome Narcissa Rodriguez. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Robert. It means so much to me to have you here and share in this night, and as well as so many friends and supporters, partners who, who came here, and uh, it means the world to me to have, have you here. I would also like to thank the Cooper Hewitt, the Smithsonian, it's amazing jurors who thought my work was worthy of this great award. Carolyn Bauman, thank you for honoring me. Sorry, I, I have to say, when I received the call um, from Caroline and a note, I was really choked up by this award. It, it really means so much to me. I would especially like to thank Thomas for his patience and his support. He signed on for a life in fashion through marriage. I don't think he knew exactly how much he was getting. Uh, when you work in any creative field, the work can at times be difficult, but it can, <clears throat> sorry, it, but it can also be profoundly rewarding as it is tonight. I'm so grateful to be honored with this award. Thank you so much.
Presenting the award for lifetime achievement, renowned American graphic designer and illustrator, and winner of the 2004 National Design Award for Lifetime Achievement, Milton Glaser. Hi, gang. On evenings such as this, one's response is usually, it's about time, <laughs> or how did I ever get this award? In tonight's case, I must admit, <clears throat> I assumed they had been honored with the National Design Award for Lifetime Achievement a very long time ago. <laughs> After all, they are 160 years old. <laughs> That's longer than the collective lives of Mozart, Van Gogh, Kafka, and Spinoza put together. Lifetime Achievement Awards are always inherently depressing since your next public appearance is likely to be an obit in the New York Times. <laughs> Ivan and Tom share that infrequently encountered quality of certain elderly married couples that is, after intimate knowledge of the other, where everything has been revealed, they still manage to accept and like each other. This is both rare and enviable. If you look over the endless landscape of Tom and Ivan's accomplishments, you'll find almost no dead wood. Their work is almost always fresh and accomplished their task with grace and appropriateness. It's amazing how much of our visual memory they occupy. The mobile logo alone fills at least 5% of my brain, <laughs> much more than my memory of my grandfather. <laughs> Tom and Ivan's work is frequently referred to as iconic, a word that's overused in our business. I looked it up uh, in my dictionary and it said, it was a word or representation that stand for something else. In the case of Jeremiah and Geismore, it stands for a level of accomplishment in design that has defined the practice for a very long time. Congratulations, boys. Lifetime achievement uh, in this long-term partnership of over 57 years. Um, it goes back to when um, Tom and I graduated from Yale, and I spent two years with Robert Brownstone uh, waiting for Tom to get out of the Army. Since then, we have worked with hundreds of talented designers, some of whom went on to start their own offices. Particularly, I'd like to mention John Grady, who's an architect and designer, and Steph Geisbuller, both of whom were principals in our uh, office along the way. And more recently, uh, a young, younger than us, a designer from uh, Israel, Sagi Haviv, who was been with us for over a decade and has become an equal partner in our firm. Graphic design, as we called it then, uh, was something that very few people had really heard of. Now the design world is big and everybody seems to know uh, what this expression means. The great thing is our work is not repetitive, so we have a thoroughly enjoyable time and we learn a lot every day and we don't pay any tuition. <laughs> the world has come to know us and so we continue to have the opportunity to do stuff for interesting people all over the place. 
We have no intention of stopping and retiring unless we have to. And Ivan and I always had the, I guess, crazy belief from the beginning that design thinking can be successful, successfully applied to a wide range of activities, you know, from creating graphic identities, which you saw there, to curating and designing exhibitions, from designing posters and other graphic images, to developing artworks for architectural settings. Hopefully, these activities have helped expand the definition of what graphic design is and can be. We've also always believed in the idea of collaboration. And tonight, I want to thank, as Ivan said, our partners, also our collaborators and our clients who have been so integral to our design efforts and also to the hundreds of staff members over the years whose dedication and talents have made possible whatever success we've achieved. So we've had a great run, and I hope we're not at the finish line yet. Thank you. I think we're supposed to take this. Yeah, yeah. It's heavy. Here to present the People's Design Award is co-founder of the Massive Change Network, Bruce Mao. As a member of this year's jury, I had the honor of helping select all of tonight's winners, uh, except the winner of the People's Design Award. As you might have guessed from the title, this award is chosen by the public. Over the past month, tens of thousands of people have cast their votes, so thank you to Smithsonian.com for helping spread the word. I'm excited to pre present this one, so I won't keep you in suspense any longer. The winner of this year's People's Design Award is Spire, designed by Zhao Zhao. So what is it exactly? Spire. <laughs> Spire is a wearable device that can track your emotional and physical states using sensors to detect breathing, movement, and activity. Through the data it collects, the device prompts users to improve mood, reduce stress, and increase activity. Described as a mini yogi in your pocket, <laughs> it aims to improve people's daily lives through greater health, balance, and productivity. Here to accept the award are Spire CEO, Jonathan Pally, and designer Zhao Zhao. Thank you. Um, thank you. A couple of years ago when we started building this product, uh, we had the, the idea of trying to create an aesthetic that combined the cutting edge sensor technology inside of here uh, with the ancient wisdom of breath and health uh, that we're bringing to the digital world. Uh, and it's, it, it's very humbling uh, to have that vision uh, be recognized as such an extraordinary gathering. Um, real quick, I want to thank um, the, our team, uh, the Spire team and all of our partners and suppliers who have worked so hard to bring this nearly impossible product uh, into reality, as well as thank the, the Cooper Hewitt and Smithsonian for nominating us and all the people who voted for us uh, online. Uh, finally, you know, the, what's happening in West Africa right now is a stark reminder of the extraordinary health challenges that we face, uh, increasingly face, uh, in this connected 21st century world. Uh, and I believe that the combination of technologists such as myself uh, and designers such as all of you here in this room and our extremely talented designer, Zhao Zhao, uh, are going to be able to meet and face that challenge. And so I, I encourage the, the extreme talent in this room, if you have the opportunity to join what's happening in digital health, please do. Uh, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Caroline Bowman. Hello, what a spectacular evening. Congratulations again to all of our winners. And to all of you, thank you. 
I can't wait to welcome you back to the new Cooper Hewitt on December 12th. And now, please join me next door for a very special performance by the Stephen Petronio Dance Company to help us conclude our anniversary program. Wait until you see the unbelievably gorgeous costumes designed by Narcisa Rodriguez. Grab a glass and follow me.